Tanuja, hello. Thank you so much for joining us on Monday, September 5th, 2022, for this session of the Storytelling by and for Adult series. Uh, please uh, introduce yourself fully. Tell us where you're telling from. Tell us the title of your story. And please tell us a story. Thank you, Eric, uh, for introducing me. Hello again, everybody. Uh, good evening. And uh, namaste to all. I am Tanuja Gangadra, and I live in Kanha Shantivana. It's a heartfulness uh, organization campus, and uh, it's the place is closer to Hyderabad. And I'm going to tell a story from the book, uh, the tales from the Vedas and Upanishads. And these tales have been retold because every story that we hear from Vedas and Upanishads have a, a background or a continuation. So these have been individually picked and retold by my spiritual guide, Sri Kamlesh D. Patel. And the name of the story is, What Did the Thunder Say? So long ago, the humans, devas, and the asuras, they all coexisted, lived together in this beautiful universe. So, firstly, the humans had two things to them. They had a life cycle, which makes the birth and ends at the death. And secondly, they had a routine or a rhythm for life. They used to wake up, have breakfast or have their food, go to work, do farming or other works. Then they come back. They spend time with their family, they end their day by going to bed. And so the same cycle repeated day in and day out. Now, the devas were the best of the lot. So they used to enjoy, they used to have a lot of fun. They used to have all round entertainment by drinking and enjoying the dances of the angels or the apsaras. And the one thing that was special about them was their immortality. They could never die and they never suffered from any disease. So thirdly were the Asuras. The Asuras were cruel and selfish. They never treated each other properly. Of course, they never treated others properly. And they all lived in the nether world or the lower worlds, which was beneath the earth. So now we saw the earth, the heavens, and the lower worlds. So the story actually starts from here. When all these three felt they should improve upon themselves, they should have respect and love from others and that they must develop certain qualities so that they can evolve and progress in their life. Now they all sat together and meditated and they prayed to the Supreme Lord that master, please, what should we do? What should we ask for? that we may become better than what we are. What should we need? So suddenly there was a thunderous sound and they could all hear the three letters loud and clear. Da, da, da. So now you all must be thinking or reflecting, what are these three letters? Da, 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 did I hear it right? What does it mean? Because the sound came from the heavens above and they all opened their eyes and guess what? they exactly knew what it meant to them. And surprisingly, each group 
as a whole group in a harmonious way felt the meaning of the da. So coming to the humans first, the humans heard and absorbed the letter da as datta. So datta means generosity. So they felt that they had too many desires. They were greedy and they would not share much with their own brothers or sisters. So they felt that the Supreme Lord is asking them to imbibe the generosity of spirit. So the datta for them meant generosity of spirit. Now coming to the second one, the devas. The devas enjoy day in and day out, having, having fun and frolic all the time. So for them, the meant damyata. So damyata is moderation. So they felt that they have to take care of the nature. They have to moderate themselves. They cannot just enjoy and wail away the time. So they started applying self-regulation and they were moderating themselves. And for example, the Agni Deva, the fire god, they, he took care of certain things in the nature. Then it was the custodian of the wind, the Vayu Deva. He did his job. So they were all alert and they did their job perfectly because they were in moderation. Now coming to the third, the Asuras. So the Asuras heard the the alphabet as Dayadvam. So Dayadvam was meant a lot, compassion, empathy, kindness, so they felt that this is something the Supreme Master wants them to imbibe because they were not treating each other well. Of course, they were cruel, they were violent. So they took the essence of the Dayadvam into them. So now, my dear friends, so we know what the three does meant to each one of them. Datta, Damyam, Damyata, and Dayadvam. So now, here I lay down the story before you all. And if we all should also, we all could also try and go further with these three words. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah. Somehow I, I feel a need to review the story. Uh, th there are three sounds, is it, or three words? There are three, uh, yeah, you can say sounds or the syllables like da, da, da. And these sounds are, are spoken by who? Uh, it came from the heavens, so technically it's like from the Supreme Lord or whom we call as God or, or the highest energy. I mean, whatever you believe in, whatever the person believes in. Mm -hmm. But then there were some other characters in the story who were um, uh, sort of violent, right? The Asuras, the demons. No. Yes. Did they hear the sound? Were they affected yes. by the sound? Yes. What, what happened when they heard the sound? Did they pay any attention, or what? What? what how did they respond? So when I was mentioning asuras, you weren't there, Eric. So I'm sorry. So the asuras heard the word dayadvam. They they took the meaning of the the as dayadvam, which meant kindness, compassion, and uh, you know empathy. But so they imbibe that quality into them. 
Oh, so it 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 changed. It affected their behavior. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, with with the one sound or with all three. So each group heard the particular uh, the. Uh, I mean, as a particular word or a meaning to them. So for a, for humans, it was generosity. For uh, devas, uh, for uh, for asuras, it was kindness, and for devas, it was moderation. Three different populations. Yes. Mm -hmm. And each one was transformed. By the uh, by the, uh, the 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 sound, the vibration, the word, the meaning. Yes. So for us, like how we uh, how we take it or how we believe is the change will come later. Before that, we have to realize that we must change, right? So mm -hmm. these three groups have at least they felt that they need a change from what they are to evolve or progress in their life. So that's when they all three sat and uh, meditated. Even those violent beings, they, yes. they recognized that they needed a change? Yes. Wonderful. OK, so they got the change. And um, you know many asuras in the Indian stories uh, that who were asura, uh, asuric by birth, but actually they were uh, divine by their deeds or, or their actions or their behavior or character. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the story is, is basically uh, how, how beings can be transformed by, uh, by, by, by sound, by words, by meanings. If they're ready. Reflection, yeah, by reflection or meditation, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anybody, any comments, thoughts, questions? I take from it the notion that um, from a single communication, different people take different meanings and we take what we need. We kind of respond from where we are. Yeah. And Tanuja, it reminds me of a very different um, story, but with the, kind of the same feeling. And Eric, you might know this one. There's a story from the Jewish tradition called The Great Debate. Huh. Do you know that one, Tanuja? And, and it's, it's a similar one in that there's a debate uh, with signs and signals. And after the debate, um, you find out that the, the two people debating had very different meanings for what they, what they said. But it's a, it's a fun story. Yeah, yes. Thank you so much, uh, Barry, because you put it very aptly uh, that they all took different meanings from the same, you know, the source. Thank you, everyone. I've seen the messages. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Sareka, were you going to say something? Uh, you're on mute, Sareka. Okay. Now, Atanuja, I was going to add that, you know, we need all the three to, you know, is like one doesn't make it better than the other. You, you know, it's like, a, you know, you need all the three yes. to make the world a better place, I suppose. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> okay. So in a way, if, if I could just tell one last thing. Mm -hmm. So in a way, uh, the story, uh, you know, we can take it uh, in this way also that we have all these three uh, kind of groups in us. You know, we have asuric qualities, right? We have demoniac qualities and we have the divic qualities or the divine qualities. And of course we have human, we are human. So that's why, you know, uh, when somebody, you know, passes away, we say that's the most, the grief is the most uh, uh, human quality. It's very natural that comes to us. Of course, the animals also grieve, but they are not conscious about it. But uh, so the grief is one thing that it takes a long time for us to come out also. So there are certain level of certain qualities which are human, very, very human to us. And uh, there are certain divine qualities like generosity or kindness or uh, 
you know selflessness or we we see in certain people that you know why why are they so special we can just see oh he's divine or he has this uh you know beautiful quality of being uh keeping others above himself and of course we have demoniac qualities like i said you know being selfish or greedy or you know so and so on so forth so uh, these are in the form of you know we also say these are in the form of gunas like the satvik guna rajas and tamas so the, the same thing that in i'm just telling you in sanskrit and uh, how we can all every time we have to overcome and get to a at least a human level and next would be the divine level just by transformation Okay, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Eric. Thank you, Divya. It was very good seeing you. I recognized you. And yeah.